Hi, Agnes here, viewer question time again. This one is from Anise. Now, Anise says, I love your Neville Nugget series. I started reading Neville books and I'm so impressed by your faith is your fortune. Being a Christian myself, I found Neville's interpretation of the 12 disciples absolutely incredible. I'm trying to understand every single paragraph of this chapter because Neville's explanation is so different from religious teachings which we hear in our churches. There are lots of things to be learned from it. I was also impressed by the power of awareness, but I'm still struggling to understand chapter 10. It is about creation. Could you please make a comment about the meaning of this one? All that you have ever been or ever will be, in fact, all that mankind ever was or ever will be, exists now. This is what is meant by creation. And the statement that creation is finished means nothing is ever to be created. It is only to be manifested. What is called creativeness is only becoming aware of what already is. It sounds a bit unreal to me. Does it con connote that the desired states or things are coexisting now in another dimension in the material world? Or is it about our imaginative world? Then Neville says that our concept of ourselves determines our time track or what I can, etc. what I can understand. It would be great if you could tell what you think of this. Oh, I love this question because I love Neville, as you guys already know. And having spent a lot of time reading his books and trying to chew through them and understand them over the last 29 years, it has been learning and putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So, Anise, I'm glad you brought this up. So, let me go back to what you said. All that, so Neville says, all that you ever have been will be, in fact, all that mankind ever was or ever will be exists now. Okay, so this is what is meant by creation and the statement that creation is finished means nothing is ever to be created. So I'm going to give it to you in simple English. Okay, let's use a really simple example with money because money you can see and it's clear. Okay, so you are here. First example, you're here, you're poor, you've got no money, you don't have a job, and you're in debt. There's one creation. Second creation, here you are, you've got a job, you've got a fantastic boss, you love where you work, you get regular bonuses every year, you have no debt, and you've paid off your house. Okay, option two. Option three, you have a fabulous business, you're running it for you and your family and you absolutely love what you do. Money comes in, money goes out, it flows in, it flows out, you feel totally secure, you feel absolutely excited about the work you do and you know that it will continue. Okay, So in that case there's three options. Really poor you that's in debt, middle you that has a job but is still dependent on someone for money and there's a ceiling on what you can make and then a third option you are your own business owner and you employ other people and not only are you making money for you and your family and turning your business over week after week but you are also putting money in other people's pockets and being part of their abundance okay so all these options are already created I did a YouTube called uh, what was it called? Conscious Selection. I'll put the link to that down below. So all these things are already in existence and what you do through your focus and conscious selection, you select the version that you want. Okay? How you do that is you deactivate the ones you don't want by stopping thinking about them, focusing on them, talking about them, feeling worried about them you drop those into the background and you bring that one that you want into the foreground. You do that because it's a focus-based universe. What you focus on is what comes forth. Remember Neville says, imagination creates reality. Now, that's a simple sentence, but what he's saying is what you're thinking about, imagining and enjoying, it might be too that you're not enjoying it, that's why you activate other states. 
what you imagine consciously is what you pull into your 3D world, okay? So really, we call it conscious creation, but it's not really quite that. Creation is already there. It's conscious selecting, okay? So I hope that makes it a little bit clearer. Let me just go through and see if I've explained everything. Yeah, it's like you said here, what is called creativeness is only becoming aware of what already is. So yes, to become wealthy, you become aware that wealth exists and you say to yourself things that wealthy people would say. Money comes easily and effortlessly. I make more money than comes in. I work half the hours for twice the pay. Money comes from other than my wage. Money comes from other than a boss. I create and it gets easier and easier. I love making money doing meaningful work. So you continue to move this way, which is thoughts of a person that has that kind of ease around money. It's a state. That state is ease around money. It's feeling, you know, I always think going through the it's wealthy, I'm wealthy is harder than saying I'm free because you can as a poor person imagine freedom because you can go and walk along a beach even if you have no money and you can exercise the feeling state of having freedom. If you feel free, that's what wealth feels like because wealth is about I can do what I want when I want, you see. So yeah, I hope that makes it a little bit more interesting and you can apply the same thing to relationships, you can apply the same thing to travel, a bodily condition where you feel too overweight, too sick, to something that you don't want deactivate it stop talking about it stop focusing on it stop feeling bad about it get into the isn't it wonderful what's happening to me now it draws it in it draws it in it draws it in okay so now let me just read what else you said does it connote that the desired states or things are coexisting now in another dimension yes and in our imaginative world, it's both. It's in, it's actually in this dimension. See, poor you can exist in this dimension in 2018 in whatever country you live in, and so can wealthy you through, it's like a cord's connected from your thoughts and your feelings. Two cords, they go up into where the universe creates stuff, and it will take its cues from you, and it will deliver whatever you've got through your little focus tube. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like to give you visuals. If you, if you can see it, it makes all these fuzzy, weird concepts a little bit more, you know, seeable. You can visualize them. So, yeah, it's like you've got a cord from your thought, cord from your feeling. It goes up to the universe and then the universe responds by delivering what you're thinking, feeling and believing about that subject. Okay? So, Anise, I hope that helps. That was a good question. I've had it there since May. So, there you go. It's done, it's done, it's done. I love Neville. I'm glad you guys are reading Neville and asking questions about Neville because oh, he's so great and he does take a while to sort of absorb for it to sink into your bones. Okay, lots of love and I will put the conscious selection one down below and the contents of your consciousness down below as well because that relates to that as well. And the Neville Nuggets. Ciao, ciao.